updated. Democrats want Republicans dead. Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? The women with the least likelihood of getting pregnant are the ones most worried about having abortions. On January 6th of 2021, you had tens of thousands of people peacefully protesting. No, it's not a right-wing conspiracy theory. It's not QAnon. It's real. <laughs> Hi, folks, and welcome back to the Enemies List podcast. I'm your host, Rick Wilson. I'm delighted to welcome my special guest today, Governor Christy Todd Whitman, former governor of New Jersey, and like me, a part of the dying old breed of Republicans from the days when the party liked to actually accomplish things rather than just have culture war. So, Governor Whitman, thank you so much for joining me today on the Enemies List. Oh, Rick, it's a pleasure to be with you. Well, I, I want to start out by, by you know, something that we've all commiserated about a long time. Um, the decline of the Republican Party that 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 we were a part of uh, that believed in uh, principles and philosophy and, you know, the power of, of a, you know, a good executive to lead people in a bipartisan way, the power of the rule of law, the power of, you know, a philosophy that, that sought to expand economic and educational opportunity for people. Um, do you see any green shoots out there? Cause I'm always looking for them of people who, who, you know, maybe in the post Trump era, uh, where we can restore some of that uh, of the party that was so effective uh, for so long at, at at working on those aspects of of politics. Well, I'm afraid that's going to come from outside the current Republican Party oh. because the current Republican Party is not a party; it's a cult. It doesn't have a set of principles. It doesn't have a a you know it didn't adopt a a set there during the last conventions. So whatever Donald Trump says tells them to do, they'll do. Right. As as you may know, uh, Andrew Yang and I have come together along with a fellow mm -hmm. from Michael Wilner to form a third party. And right. that's where a lot of these people are going. A lot of the people who mm -hmm. are part of the forward party are dissident Republicans who are saying, no, enough of this. We cannot have this right. anymore. It's destructive to our democracy. We're in a very, very scary time as far as I'm concerned. And those mm -hmm. will be the ones who will build back. Uh, the Republican Party, if that's what happens, or build a third party to challenge the two major parties and try to keep them honest and getting things done. You know, Governor, one of the things with the 80th anniversary of Normandy, I know you were over there. Um, we uh, uh, that's the other part of the party that sort of disappeared because now it's all Trump's whim about what he wants and uh, about, you know, basically abandon NATO, abandon Ukraine, allow mm -hmm. Putin to, you know, become the dominant political and military power in Europe. That, especially with the anniversary of Normandy, we look back, you know, and you and I came up during the Reagan era, and that was a moment where where a strong American foreign policy was definitional to the GOP. And now it seems to be, at best, um, siding with the enemy some days, and at worst, you know, outright outright treason. No, absolutely. And and that's, you know, when you spend, I had the opportunity to spend five days with uh, a number of the veterans, with eight of the veterans. And when you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. listen to their stories, when you walk the beaches of Omaha, when you look at those cliffs and you think of what those young, scared 19, 18 year olds <sighs> did to protect our mm -hmm. democracy. And now we seem to not care, not yeah. think the Constitution and the rule of law are important and we don't need to right. have allies and we're throwing it all away. And it's really I mean, it's it's sad and it's terrifying altogether. It, it uh, really it, 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 it is terrifying. It, it is terrifying. And mm -hmm. I look at it. I look at it all the time and I think, you know, what would Ronald Reagan think? What would George, my old boss, George Herbert Walker Bush, what would he think of oh, yes. of the position we're in now? And I, I, I have to imagine, it's not that they would be angry; they would just they they would not be able to process it. They wouldn't be able to believe that the Republican Party is now the party of Vladimir Putin. They wouldn't. They right. couldn't. They know. couldn't process it. The hey, the you know, H W would say something like, "What the old K G B guy? What? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just. Can you imagine madness. Dwight Eisenhower? What Dwight Eisenhower would oh, think? Oh, oh my lord. Moment? Oh my lord! I mean, Correct, and and, and, and even Nixon, Nixon, who was a very smart was player, say, in that. yeah, right. I mean, even um, he, for all his faults, uh, was a master 
uh, yeah. diplomacy and international relations mm -hmm. and recognize the importance of standing up to people and uh, as yep. Ronald Reagan did, you know, standing up to the dictators, not cuddling up to them, which is what unfortunately Donald Trump seems to be doing. I mean, if you draw an arc in modern modern presidential history, being careful of the Soviet Union from Truman to Ike to JFK to Lyndon Johnson to Nixon to That's Ford right. to Carter to Reagan to Bush to Clinton to Obama, not one and then and and then Debbie, not one of them woke up in the morning and said, "Wow, I want to model our country after this KGB fantasy that that, that these guys are running." And I mean, no, it just, absolutely. Well, the other basic difference is they all respected the rule of law and the Constitution, and we have never had a president right. or a presidential candidate who's refused to accept the outcome of the election. And he's basically yeah. said, no matter what happens in this year, he's going to be president because it's going to be illegitimate if he's not – if well, he doesn't and, win. And, Governor, this is, this is where I was actually going to, going to take the conversation mm -hmm. next is one of the things that has redefined the GOP – is a contempt now for the Constitution and the rule of law. Mm -hmm. They want to mm -hmm. take it as a Chinese menu and pick one or two things out of the Constitution that they like right. and leave the rest behind. They want right. to they want to apply the rule of law sometimes to their political enemies, but not have it apply to them. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, where do you see in the in the sort of state of the race right now the fact that the rule of law did catch up with Donald Trump? And, you know, he's now a convict. He's now has 34 felony convictions. Do you do you have do you where do you see that changing the race as we sit today? I don't think it changes it much that much. There are some people who have indicated that a, a guilty conviction, a, a guilty verdict would sway their vote. But for his supporters, they just dig in harder. I mean, they're well, not yeah. going to believe anything anyway. So there's That's no right. point with that. And unfortunately, this wasn't the strongest case. The really important cases Agreed. to our democracy are in Georgia and Florida. And it's mm -hmm. outrageous that we won't get those cases heard before the election. This slow walking by the judges that, that Donald Trump uh, appointed is just unconscionable. And uh, I, these, these are, people need to know on these cases. They really do. They're extremely important. I think the Supreme Court immunity decision is coming any minute now. We're going to find out where that where that leads us. But in the case in Florida, I think you're exactly right. Judge Cannon has been a travesty. I mean that yeah. that her delays and her incredibly obvious job shopping for the future with Trump if he wins again is I I I, I have trouble understanding how there's no. Uh, you know, ethical boundary that she hasn't crossed yet and that hasn't caused enough of a backlash for someone in the DOJ to say, hey, now, this is not a, this is not a place where we're getting an unbiased hearing. We need to move this or some. I, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know the, the, the secret handshakes there, but it is kind of astounding to me just how, what, what she's a great exemplar of this sort of federalist society culture of of politicized judges in this country. That, um, you know, and we used to, you know, as Republicans, we used to go, oh, we shouldn't legislate from the bench. This woman is campaigning for Donald Trump from the bench. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a it's a travesty. And I am very worried about what the Supreme Court's going to do with the immunity decision. I mean, nobody is above the law. They're not above the law. Nope. And uh, he and neither should a president be above the law. It doesn't you know, work that way. The, 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 the court, I think, <clears throat> rightly many years ago said. While he's in office, president, the civil side of it, you know, you can't sue the president on the civil grounds while right, he's in office. Right. I think that was a correct decision. Mm -hmm. But this idea that a president can commit crimes and have essentially a blanket immunity, if the court makes that decision, I think we have stepped back into or stepped into a very dangerous time in this country. I think it, I think that could alter our understanding of justice at a really terrifying level. Oh, absolutely, because there is immunity for people in public office as long as they are doing what they're being attacked for is within the boundaries of their right. job. Trying to overturn the election is not Correct. in any way, shape, or form within the boundaries of and the responsibilities of the president. It, it's not. Yeah. And so that's where it becomes – I don't know how they can come out with a decision – that says that there is immunity. I think they are going to come out with some form of immunity for him because they picked this case up. There was no need for them to hear this case. 
There was an appellate court decision right. on it. It was unanimous. It was well written. Mm-hmm. And they went down and pulled it up so they could make, I believe, a political decision. And that is really, really bad for the country. Uh, you know, and I think the the Justice Thomas and Justice Alito have cracked the door open to basically start talking about their own politics, which was something that the Supreme Court has had never, never done. ever done in never. the past. It was just absolutely not not going to happen. Um, and, and, you know, I was thinking about this last night uh, when I was prepping for the show. You wrote a book years ago called It's My Party Too, and you had some warnings in there about the populist movement, about the mm-hmm. the sort of – and it was emerging by 2005, six, you know, pre-Tea uh, Party, pre-Obama – but that mm-hmm. bully culture on the right, that sort of like culture warrior thing that wasn't about government or governance or government, and it wasn't about helping anybody. It was about like constantly revving up the anger machine. Right. Um, and and I, I was thinking about this last night, and, and you predicted this in 2005 that we were going to have a divergence between that – and I, I'm going to use the phrase broadly, the, the Reagan Bush wing of the party and this populist wing of the party. And I looked back on it last night. And I was thinking about people I knew or worked for, uh, you know, Jim Douglas, Bill Weld, George Pataki, mm-hmm. Paul Slucci, you, all these people that were out there that were so well regarded as governors. And, you know, we had Larry Hogan and Charlie Baker until, right. you know, right. uh, you know, the, sort of the very last of the breed. And now, uh, it looks to me like you're going to end up with New England going and the and the you know East Coast essentially going very very blue, because the Republicans have written themselves out of the script in these states, completely written themselves out of the script. Well, that's why uh, we are for, why we formed the Forward Party, focusing mm-hmm. on state and local, and we're supporting Republicans, Democrats, Independents as long as they sign the pledge, which is our platform, and our platform right. is principles. And it's, I mean, the, the sad thing is, the pledge is you pledge to uphold the law, respect the, respect the Constitution, work with anyone to <laughs> wow. solve problems. I know, I know. It's, it's right. earth-shattering, earth-shattering. That's radical. You know, work with, work with anyone to solve problems, create a safe space for discussion of contentious issues, uh, mm-hmm. work constantly to open the process so that people who are legally able to vote can vote. I mean, and then it's up to the states and the candidates to decide what's the most important issue to us here. So you have people who are actually representing their constituents and not a party. Because that's, and our founding fathers warned us about this. They said, watch out for parties because they, this is what they feared, Mm -hmm. that that power would become more important than policy. Power and faction inside the parties. Absolutely. Well, and I I told Andrew this a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if you're going to do a third party, Mm -hmm. for the love of God, start at the local and state level. Don't try to run for president first. That's always where they fall, the third party efforts fall into into exactly. disarray and conflict. You know, the minute you get a couple seats in a legislative body somewhere, the win. ball game yep. changes. The minute yep. you get a few people, and and there is a cohort of Republican and ex Republican and independent leaning conservatives who are in play. And mm-hmm. you know, I, I tell our Democratic friends, I'm like. The problem with our Democratic friends is often they want to look at people like us and say, well, you have to convert into a progressive now. You have to be an AOC Democrat. Mm. And and that's just not going to sell with a lot of people where where there is a space that a a moderate party or or a party that cares about operational governance can Mm -hmm. can gain ground, I think. So it's interesting because the, the lessons of I think the lessons the Democrats are drawing from the Republican collapse in the blue states is we should be more progressive. That's what got us here. But it's not. It's the Republicans have screwed up is why you got there. You're you're, you're in great power because the Republicans became increasingly nuts, you know, to to Mm -hmm. go from to go from a Republican governor like like a George Pataki um, to to a Kathy Hochul. The state was not that radically altered, except that the Republicans became radically altered themselves. Right. And, no, and that's they, absolutely true. And, it's, and I also uh, think – go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say that's it, what's interesting to me is we are getting it, almost as many Democrats coming to forward as we are sure. Republicans because Listen, they're the, just as worried. And, and, and I tell my Democratic friends this all the time. I'm like, Listen. 
a, a Democrat in Western North Carolina or in Kansas or in in rural Minnesota is not a Democrat in San Francisco or Los Angeles or Boston. They're mm-hmm. different critters. And 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 that's one thing that both parties I think have a have a have a failure mode on right now is they kind of want to demand ideological conformity from everybody everywhere, even in places that are different. No, they do. Like, and, and and you know, you were a an effective moderate Republican governor in a fairly blue state. It wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't as blue then as it, as it is now, but it, if you had been, if central casting told you, no, you have to be here on this and here on this issue, and you've got to be this way on abortion and this way on guns and this way on education, you might not have won. Oh, you I might wouldn't have. Been have. And actually, yeah. interestingly <laughs> enough, after my reelect in 97, mm-hmm. I was asked to run for the Senate, which I didn't particularly I want to do, but I said, fine, I'll go down and do it. I met with the Republican Senatorial Campaign Committee in mm-hmm. 1997. And they looked me in the eye and said, if you say one word about campaign finance reform, you'll get no help from us. Right. And I said, no, I don't operate that way. I happen <laughs> to think campaign finance reform is pretty important. We need to address the issue. But once, that's the kind of once hold again, they have. You were, you, on, once again, you were prescient because that is the issue in a lot of ways. Yeah. No, but I mean, it, it just it's that kind of hold they have. And it's gotten even stronger now, leadership. And they will take yeah. they will run a candidate against you in a primary. Uh, if you don't tell 100%. the hundred percent, if you're not so, a Mitch McConnell campaign finance yeah. guy, you're not getting. Uh, and I even knew a couple of years ago a self funder who could have been very successful in a purple state when he went in and said, "I, I I'm going to you know put my own money into this race, but I'm I don't like Citizens United. I think this is corrupt." And mm-hmm. it was they're like essentially like, "Okay, bye, get out, leave." Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so one of the things I think that has shaped the, the course of this presidential campaign, and it shaped 2022, certainly, was the Dobbs decision. And yes. as as a woman governor, uh, which was, you know, I, the first in New Jersey, obviously, one of the one of the first in the in the country, um, you know, you observe this all very closely. Um, how deep I mean, I, I, I keep trying to, like, calibrate it. How deep is the rift now among moderate Republicans with this issue? Because I see it in our polling that it's like a, a bomb went off. And there are days I'm like, I can't I can't even process how much it's harmed the GOP. What are you seeing out there on the Dobbs issue in the country? Oh, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, women are furious <laughs> and men, too. I mean, this is about individual decision making. This is about controlling your own life. It's about I mean, this thing has gotten so out of control now with the in vitro fertilization and some of the state bills that are coming out, down that people are, I mean, you've got to be kidding me. You, you, right. if you, it's nuts. What do families do that want to get, that need in vitro fertilization in order to have a child, but they don't want 15 kids. And if they have, you know, the sperms, if, if they donate to the sperm bank and they, they get, yeah. they have a lot of eggs, but they don't want all those eggs. They don't want all those children, but now they may be prosecuted for killing them and the lab might be prosecuted. So nothing's Mm -hmm. happening. People are being forced back to the old days. Women are Mm -hmm. being forced back to the old days of risking their lives. And it's unconscionable to me uh, that this is happening now. It's just, we took for granted too long that that Roe v. Wade was, Mm -hmm. hey, that's it. It's settled. It's the law of the land. Don't go near it. You know, you can make some tweaks around the edges, tweaks for the states, but um, the basic the basic right of a woman to control her own body is everyone thought was solidified in law. And it, it wasn't. It, it, it is, it continues. I, again, uh, I, I look at this in our polling and in other, in other research we've been doing. And every time I think that the impact of it has started to fade or, the, or that we found the boundary line of it, you know, the, it, it, it's not the old model that we used to use in, in Republican politics was in, any given state between 22 and 25 percent or 22 and 28 percent, excuse me, of Republican women were pro-choice. And that was either like Mm -hmm. Roe v. Wade pro-choice or libertarian government just stay out of my business Mm -hmm. pro-choice. That number is now close to 45 percent, which I I think has the potential to reshape the party um, going forward once, especially once we're out Mm -hmm. of the era of Trump. I think he is he is like. He, he well, still the trouble holds. is it's, it's it's not going to be that easy. I mean, yeah, okay. I worry 
a lot. If he gets into office this oh, election, oh, yeah. I don't think he's going to go uh, at the end of four years. He uh, will have redone not. the Justice Department. He will have changed. I mean, he doesn't pay any attention to the laws anyway. He's got a court that's on his side and the Supreme Court. Um, he's going to stay there. And even if he weren't, um, he uh, his what he has started is not going to go away. I mean, it, there's nobody else who motivates it the way he does. Right. But still, it's 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 opened a set of it's it's made it okay to act out on emotions that pe we've had all. At, I mean, oh, yeah. back in our history. I mean, come on, we've had slavery, we've had bigotry, we've had all these things, but you didn't act out on them. That was not okay to be anti-Semitic. Right. Um, it wasn't okay to destroy things, and now not just destroying things, they're going after people. Mm -hmm. And, again, if the court keeps saying things like bump stocks are fine, which uh, some Republican, I can't remember which congressman was, it was one of those old things, bump stocks don't kill people, people kill mm -hmm. people. But <laughs> have you ever seen a bump, bump stock out there in the air just firing <laughs> off on its own? I mean, come on, people are holding the bump stocks, and, and that's what causes them to go off. Uh, this This is... I think the most important thing of what you were just saying was, I don't think he leaves at the end of a third term. Yeah. I think he's too, at that point, too dug in, too empowered, too, you know, high on his own supply, whatever the case is. Um, and and I think that that there are frac there are fractures in the MAGA edifice that didn't exist before. I mean, but I I I think, and maybe you agree with this because you know your your work with Forward, etc. I think it might end up being a much smaller Republican Party, still sort of Trumpist in its orientation, but that mm -hmm. this may be the breaking point where we end up with, you know, a functional set of other parties that become appealing to voters um, at the state and local level. Well, I think that's right. Uh, what I worry about in that in, in that scenario would be it be too fractured to have any real impact. Uh, you're right in that you only need a few people to start to make a difference, particularly in state legislatures. But um, if you get too many of those fractions and they're not working together, I, I've never sure. thought – I used to be very solid. A two-party system works for us, get too confusing if we didn't, whatever. Now I am absolutely convinced we need at least one other party to hold the two parties honest because – there are 500,000 elective offices across the country, and in any given yep. year, 70% of those are uncontested. I was That's listening right. today. I looked at my ballot in the primary, and I didn't have any choices. I mean, it just was one person in the primaries. Uh, the, the general elections are the same, and then 5 to 10% of those offices are never filled. That's where we at Forward are, are going. And with States United Democracy Center, we're, we're educating people as to as to the importance. It would non totally nonpartisan. Uh, don't get involved in that at all, but right. give advice to to governors and the states' attorneys general and secretaries of state on how to protect mm -hmm. democracy, and educate people as to what the importance of the vote and how it should be done. What what happens when you vote? Who's responsible for what? So they know how it's how the oversight goes. Um, those things, because unfortunately we've stopped teaching civics, and so many people have no clue how the process works or who's responsible or overseeing, and we're trying to tell them the importance of electing people to Secretary of State, to Attorney General, to the governorship, who will protect the rule of law and uphold I, democracy. Your point about civics is so well taken, because I was watching a focus group uh, from another another organization conducted recently, and a woman said well the president is the boss of congress and every and the supreme court he should be able to do and the folks group moderator was like well ma'am you're describing a king she goes well that's what we sh we should we're supposed to have that's what we should i'm like did you miss the origin story lady <laughs> I mean, did you miss the start point of this whole country that we've right. sort of ambled through for a long time but so uh, i guess i guess one other thing i wanted to talk to you about today um, as this campaign heats up, um, we're about to see a, a competition between two guys who are older. Um, what are your predictions on the debate we've got coming up in a couple weeks? Um, actually I think it's next week. Um, oh, next week. Yeah. Oh, Lordy, yeah. it is next week, isn't it? It is next week. Time yes. flies when you're having a horrifying <laughs> misery. Time. Right. 
I would be very interested. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be with my family on our vacation out in Washington State in the middle of nowhere, uh, hiking and fishing, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it. But the, uh, the scenario doesn't benefit Trump. That's the only thing that I will say, because there's no yeah. studio audience. They're going to mm-hmm. cut off the mics if you go over your time. That's, God bless that does them. not, yeah, God bless them. That, that does not play to his strength, which is to bully everybody in the, you know, the way he did with, mm-hmm. with Hillary Clinton walking around behind her. And I mean, I just went with Jeb and Marco yeah, and uh, everybody yeah, else. I mean, so it's going to be interesting to see. And, you know, yes, they're both old, frankly, and at least mm-hmm. Biden can read off a teleprompter and, and make right. it work. Whereas, and, and he understands policy and that, that kind of thing. Trump, right. you listen to some of his speeches, and I'm trying to figure out, what do you just say? I mean, he, trying to do three or four sentences together that make logical sense is a difficulty, it seems. You know, Governor, I've, <laughs> I, I have found myself lately watching Trump, because I, of course, because of what we do, I watch you have to. way yeah. too much Trump video content, way too much. I actually had a moment the other day where I was like, Oh my God, I, I, what is this emotion? I feel bad for this guy. He's confused. He's just yeah. telling the same old stories over and over again. And he does, mm-hmm. he's lost the, he's lost the, Trump has lost the thread of, because mm-hmm. look, I was opposed from the guy from 2015, but he did have at the time, uh, he was a big, a big performer. He had a lot of physicality right. on the stage and, and he was funny. The guy was legitimately fast on his feet and kind of witty. And now it just seems, it's just kind of painful to watch it now. No, no, it is. And and some of them, I mean, literally, I've looked at some of them and read some of them and tried to figure out what exactly he was talking about because he bounces all over the place and he can't put sentences together. And you want to say, okay, you make fun of Biden when he forgets a name or he stumbles. He uh, Trump couldn't say, right. who was it the other day that he couldn't, couldn't get the last name of Ronnie Jackson. So, he was calling Ronnie right. Jackson his drug dealer, Ronnie. Jo- I mean, his doctor, excuse me, yeah. uh, <laughs> Ronnie Johnson. And it's like, what? I mean, <laughs> it's wrong. Well, he didn't. He didn't know Barron's age. Uh, his right. son's oh, his own sad. son's age. You know, it, that to me says he's got as many mental pro. He's got more mental problems, more serious yeah. uh, mental problems than than Biden does. I think they're. I, mean, I think they're increasingly at the fore. Well, Governor Whitman, I am so grateful that you came on the show today. Thank you so very much, and best of luck with the Forward Party. And uh, well, we look forward, to, look forward to talking to you again soon. Great. I'd love that. That would be Great. terrific. Thank you so much.